algebraic proofs in that. <coughs> Let's take a look at two examples. A clean example and a geometric example. So the first one is saying prove n cubed minus n plus 1 is odd for all positive integers n. Okay, so let's quickly go through the key uh, algebraic expressions you guys need to know. Well, they've already told you n is a po positive integer and that's always the case. So n is a positive integer or a whole number. The next thing we need to define is even numbers. All even numbers are multiples of 2. So 2n would be the even numbers. How about the odd numbers then? Well, odd numbers are in between the even numbers. They're one more or one less than the evens. So you can use either 2n minus 1 or 2n plus 1 to define your odd numbers. Okay. Now, it depends on the context of the question. Usually, I like to use 2n minus 1, but it's up to you, isn't it? The last thing is consecutive numbers. So if we have an integer n, consecutive numbers would be n, n plus 1, n plus 2. Okay, you're just adding 1. But also you could go the other way, n minus 1, n minus 2, etc. They're consecutive, uh, what? Consecutive integers. But then we have to look at consecutive even numbers, consecutive odd numbers, okay? Well, if an even number is 2n, there will be a consecutive even number. Well, if you have 2, 4, 6, 8, you know that the even numbers differ by 2. So 2n plus 2 is a consecutive even number. We could go 2 the other way, 2n minus 2, etc. So these are consecutive evens. How about odds? Well, if we have 2n minus 1, the next odd number would be 2 away, 3, 5, 7, etc., which would be 2n plus 1. Then we can go the other way, 2n minus 3, or that way, 2n plus 3. These are consecutive odd numbers. So these are the main ones you guys need to be familiar with at GCSE Maths, okay? And we need to use this concept or these algebraic expressions to be able to prove something like this. So to prove n cubed minus n plus 1 is odd, well, odd numbers are in this form. Plus 1 or minus 1. Ah, it has a plus 1. So somehow I need to prove that this is then even. Because remember, an odd number is plus 1 to an even number. So odd is even plus 1. So for us, we just need to show that n cubed minus n is even. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, at a very basic level, you just need to look at n cubed minus n and say, okay, what algebraic manipulation can I do to that? So it suffices to prove, so suffices to show that n cubed minus n is even. Now, what can we do with that? Well, when I see n cubed minus n, it's a cubic, but we don't need to factorize the cubic into three brackets because there's no numbers here. We can just factorize out n. If I take out n, n cubed over n is n squared, minus n over n is 1. Ah, what do I notice about that? That's difference of two squares. n plus 1, n minus 1. Actually, I've seen this before. That's consecutive integers. If you have n, here's n plus 1, here's n minus 1. So n, n plus 1, n minus 1 are all consecutive integers. OK, but what does that mean? Well, that means then at least one of them must be even. For example, if this is even, then it will go odd, then even, ioi. But if this one was odd, this would be even, and that would be odd. Oeo. In both situations, at least one of the values has to be even. Well, what does that mean? If one of these values is even, it must mean that the whole number is even. Even times anything is even. As long as you have one number that's even, you're all good. Okay, so 
Um, what are we saying here? So, uh, uh, consecutive inches, therefore, at least one of the numbers is even, therefore, n, m minus 1, m plus 1 is even, therefore, even plus 1 is odd. Okay, and that's proved. Okay, use a bit of theory there to help you guys out. So this is a proof by deduction. In fact, all the proofs are actually deduction, but uh, A level, we do a different one. We do contradiction as well. So the next one was a past GCSE question that students struggled with. So I have two right angle triangles. I have A, B, C on one of them, A plus one, B plus one, C plus one on the other. It's saying prove that A, B and C cannot all be integers. All right. Well, when you see a right angle triangle with three lengths, what should you immediately be thinking about? Pythagoras. So, A squared plus B squared is C squared. So, for triangle one, A squared plus B squared is C squared. And we do the same for triangle two. A plus one squared. Now, here, guys, you have to be careful. We need to use brackets. B plus one squared is C plus one squared. Okay. And now, naturally, you're going to want to expand the brackets. Now, you can write out the brackets twice. At least all of them will look the exact same. <clears throat> or we square the first term. You multiply these together, which is A. You double it, 2A. And then we square that, 1. Then we have B squared, 2B, 1. C squared, 2C, 1. Now, when we simplify, I have A squared plus B squared. I have 2A plus 2B. And I have 2. Then here I just have c squared plus 2c plus 1. Now what do I know here? I know a squared plus b squared is c squared. So I have c squared 2a 2b 2, c squared 2c 1. Alright, what can I do there? I can cancel the c squared from both sides. Okay. All right, what can I do now? Um, I mean, I could divide by 2. I could bring all the evens on both one side. I could move the 2 over. Here is more of like an explanation of, of uh, concept here. So here, that 2C, if I bring it over here, I get 2A plus 2B minus 2C plus 2. So that's moving that there, equals 1. Well, how does that make sense? How can all these even numbers sum to make 1? if all of these are integers. Okay, you could factorize out 2. You get a plus b minus c plus 1 is 1. The right-hand side, or sorry, the left-hand side is a multiple of 2, which means if a, b, and c are integers, that would be even. But the right-hand side is 1. That's odd. That's a contradiction. That doesn't make sense. So we need to write a little explanation here. If a, b, and c are integers, then the left-hand side is even as it is a multiple of 2. However, the right-hand side is odd. An even number and an odd number cannot be the same. And even and odd cannot be the same. Therefore, A, B, C cannot all be integers. Okay, so it does require an explanation for all of them. Okay, so guys, for proof questions, always write a cheeky explanation at the end, just to make sure you understand what you're doing. Okay, so guys, if you learned something today, I really appreciate if you hit the thumbs up, subscribe for more maths content, and if you're interested in my GCSE main course, uh, yeah, lessons, more details in the description, and feel free to join the Loon Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback from the Loon Gang community. Link is in the description. See you in the next video. Nice.